Dear Mr. Mark Neal, Deputy Mayor of South Bend, dear panelists, Sister Charlotte Wagner, Dr. James Waller, Dr. Gatsinzi Wasaninyenzi, Mr. Edward Kaihura. Dear genocide survivors, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, friends of Rwanda, good afternoon. It is my humble duty and privilege to host you here at the University of Notre Dame in McKenna Hall. On behalf of the Rwandan American community of the Midwest, I would like to welcome you and thank you for joining us in solidarity on this date for the 20th commemoration of the genocide against the Tutsi. This afternoon, we remember the victims, we pay tribute to young and old, rich and poor, pious and impious, a whole murdered generation. For these I weep, says the Book of Lamentations. This year and this commemoration is particularly poignant. 20 years have passed since the genocide. And for many of us who witnessed immeasurable loss and still bear the memories of what we saw, this landmark means so much. It represents the essence of what we have been through as individuals and as Rwandans within the last 20 years. It is the first milestone to showcase that we have survived surviving. Among the many me terrible measures of the genocide, the worst consequence was the disintegration of the family, especially the separation of children from their parents. And though our lives have continued on, this remains the biggest and heaviest burden on our hearts. But what is inherent in the Rwandan spirit that has allowed us to trudge forward is our unwavering hope in the future and in each other. Where we lost our nuclear family, we have become one another's family and lifted each other. With an absolute iron will, we look towards the future and we continue to have indomitable faith in life. And as time continues to pass, and we commemorate three, four, five decades of the genocide against the Tutsi, we will remain steadfast and proactive in remembering the lives of our loved ones. When I saw the theme for this year, remember, unite, renew, I wanted to reflect on what these words mean to me as an individual and as a survivor of the genocide. After all, so extreme were the circumstances, it's easy for us to forget that the statistics, one million plus, signifies individual people and individual stories. People whose hopes and dreams and whose lives were tragically cut short. It's thus in dedicating time to remember these children, mo mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, that we give their silence a voice. It's in uniting our individual memories into a collective Rwandan memory and identity that we will ensure that their legacy and that of the genocide never fades. And it's about having a renewed faith in humanity, in Rwanda, in the international community, as we strive towards quelling the spark of intolerance and hatred to make this world a more tolerant place. Ladies and gentlemen, as we commemorate this evening, you will notice that there are pieces of papers being passed around. And I will ask for your cooperation in answering two questions. One, where were you during the 20, 20 years ago this April? And what do you remember about it? And two, what does this theme, remember, unite, renew, mean to you? I will have ushers coming through and they will pass them to me. And as time permits, I will read responses from members of the audience throughout the evening. Friends, by coming together today, we will be able to reflect with pain 
and humility that this would not have been possible without the help of ordinary men and women who followed orders without question or simply stood by doing nothing. This is central in renewing our commitment and obligation to ensure that this will never happen again. At this time, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to invite Manasse Mujemana, a spiritual leader within this community, to lead us in opening prayer. Let us stand up for prayer. Our Father, our Lord, we are gathered here as Rwandans and their friends to remember, to reflect, to hold hands, to, to light a can candles for the many people we lost 20 years ago during the unconscionable event of the genocide against the Tutsis. Although this event is horrible, even humanly impossible to understand. We can come under your wing so that you give us faith we need. You give us hope. You give us solace. Because we as humans cannot have it. Only in you, our creator, we can get it. This is why we come to unite our strength, to unite our thoughts, so that we can look back and see how we can even change the way we deal with ourselves as human beings. Help us transform our pain into a renewed strength to rebuild our country so that we can have this humanly impossible reconciliation, but possible according to God. Dear Lord, send your spirit upon us to strengthen our resolve, to root out hate and fear in our lives, and replace them with your love. We ask you to guide the program that's going to take place here, that every person who's here, and even those who are going to hear about this, this program, are going to feel hope, are going to know that you still love us, are going to feel that they can even have the strength to forgive if it comes from you. Help us, each one of us. Help us, the speakers and the panelists. And may you help the leaders in our country to give us to give them the wisdom they need to deal with those difficult issues. May you stay with us today and forever. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for setting a spiritual tone for this evening. Ladies and gentlemen, 
please welcome Gaetan Gatete, President of the Rwandan American Community of the U.S., to come forward and share some opening remarks. Mr. Mark Neal, Deputy Mayor, City of South Bend. Distinguished speakers, Dr. James Wera, Cohen Professor of Holocaust and Genocide Studies. Mr. Edward Kaihura, Genocide Survivor. Sister Charlotte Ann Wagner, Congregation of Sisters of Holy Cross. Dr. Ezra Katsinzi Bastaninyendi. Associate Professor Alabama in M University. Pastor Jen David Jenkins, the Wanda Outreach Community Leaders in Chicago. Distinguished guests, dear friends of Rwanda, dear compatriots. On behalf of the Rwandan American community in the Midwest, I would like to welcome each one of you to the 20th commemoration of genocide against Tutsi here at the University of Notre Dame. I take this opportunity to thank, to thank you all for taking the time from your busy schedules to be with us today as we commemorate our loved ones who were brutally killed in 1994 just because of who they were. Kwebuka 20 calls us to remember, to unite, and to renew our commitment to never again to genocide. It reminds us of our duty to tell the truth of what happened in Rwanda. His Excellency President Paul Kagame, President of Rwanda, said it very eloquently on April 7th, and I quote, the people who planned and carried out the genocide were Rwandans. But the history and the root cause go beyond this country. This is why Rwandans continue to seek the most complete explanation possible for what happened. We do it so with humility as a nation that near, nearly destroyed itself. But we are nevertheless determined, determined determined to recover, to recover our dignity as a people, end of quote. As we gather here to pay tribute to the victims of the genocide against the Tutsi, I would like to recognize the courage of the survivors and the resilience of the Rwandan people. It has been 20 years since the horror of the genocide against Tutsi started in Rwanda on April 7, 1994. 10,000 people were killed every day for 100 days. Our loved ones were brutally murdered, their dignity was stripped off, and their cry for help went unheard. By July 4, 1994, more than one million innocent people had lost their lives. Others were, others were left to die, but refused. These survivors, most of them widows and orphans, have decided to use their pain and scars as stepping stones to a hope for life. And today we commemorate and we celebrate their heroism. We have many survivors in this audience who lived through the horrors of the genocide that took lives of our loved ones, and today we salute them. Some of us were not in Rwanda in 1994, but we went through the agony as we watched our mothers, our fathers, siblings, 
children and the friends slaughtered, bodies piling up on the streets, and the other floating in the rivers. Despite what the survivors went through, they have been so courageous in sharing their remarkable stories this week with the community. It, has, it is a step forward to healing and an inspiration to, rest, to the rest of us. Their stories call us to renew our commitment to never again to genocide in Rwanda and there is well in the world. As we remember our loved ones today, we are also reminded of those who are, stealing, who are still holding the evil wishes to exterminate their fellow citizens. Mass atrocities and the conflicts are still going on in the world, in many parts of the world. And for example, in Syria, in the Central African Republic, and in South Sudan. It seems that the world has not learned from 1994 genocide against the Tutsis. We must not never let what happened in Rwanda to happen anywhere in the world. It is therefore our duty to remind ourselves to raise our voices against any injustice whenever and wherever it happens. What happened in our beloved country, Rwanda, should never be tolerated anywhere in the world. In the same light, we should unite and condemn any genocide ideology and genocide deniers. 20 years ago in Rwanda, the right to life was denied by genocide perpetrators. Unfortunately, today, these same perpetrators are still safely running the street everywhere in the world, including here in the USA, still spreading the same hatred ideology. We must commit to fight the genocide ideologists and the revisionists who have vowed to deny the survivors the right to remember. We must unite to condemn it. Let's speak up for our loved ones who were silenced, silenced in 1994. We have to speak up for the survivors. We owe a lot to those who departed before us and we owe to the survivors who showed courage and resilience in forgiving those who caused them so much pain, but decided to work together to build a new prosperous and a new world. Together, today we are also about to hear from one of the survivors of the famous Hotel Rwanda. We get just a glimpse of what he went through during the 100 days. We will hear from our keynote speaker who took time to research genocide in Rwanda in the hope of reading the minds of the killers and making sense of why they did the unthinkable. Those who think that genocide could only happen in Rwanda must think again. It can happen anywhere in the world. Genocide was not the work of the uneducated mass. It was the work of the so-called intellectuals, university professors, and bad government leadership who prepared, organized, and incited people to kill. The killers were neighbors. They were people you went to school with. Even husband and wives killing their own spouse. Or parents killing their own children because they looked like duty. It was the work of evil. That is why we have the duty to remind the world to be vigilant and to commit to act whenever there is a sign of genocide. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, despite what we went through, the Rwandan community has been able to hear. 
to forgive and to live a meaningful life because of the support we have been receiving through, throughout the years. We hope that by telling you our stories, we have inspired you and we continue to inspire you in a way. Remembrance is not an easy act as it brings memories of the horrible event of 1994. And sometimes people ask us why we do it every year. Why do we remember? But the words of Ambassador, Ambassador Samantha Power, U.S. Permanent Representative to the United Nations, at the UN commemoration of the 20th commemoration of the Tutsis, genocide against the Tutsis, assures that we must do it. We must have the courage to keep doing it. And I quote, I would like to speak to the Rwandans here tonight. We who are the symbols of the international community today have the only words of regret and the awkward apology to offer you. But I want to close by conveying three deep truths. First, please know how serious we take your pain and your loss. Not just the pain of 1994, the pain of unimaginable slaughter, but the pain of and the loss you live every day, every minute of the day, the pain of the void. Second, you Rwandans, you have changed the world. Your history of devastation has become our, our, our history of, of collective failure. We have scrambled to try to do better. We know what is possible because you will never and you should never let us forget. We are far from perfect. We don't have to tell you. But you have made us improve. You have helped us improve. Third and finally, you started your new country in 1994 with nothing. But just with nothing, with streets and fields, and the rivers and the homes filled with the foreign bodies of your brothers and sisters, your sons and daughters, with a prime docket of 800,000 murders, you decided, those of you who remain, to be the new Rwanda. You have made the believer strides and you have a long journey yet ahead. We are, we are not dead. We, we were not dead for, the you, for you 20 years ago, but we promise we, we are here to help you build that bright future you so deserve, end of quote. Ladies and gentlemen, we are committed to build a bright future, and together we can make it. And the only way to achieve it is to start in our homes, start educating our children, teach them love and respect to one another. This year, our young generation of age of 20, who are new women, have been carrying the flame of remembrance to all corners of the world. Here in the USA, we joined our brother and sister to pass on that flame of remembrance. In this spirit, I would like to invite the Executive Committee of the one American Committee of Midwest and Deputy Mayor Mark Neal to help me pass on the flame of remembrance to our young people. This flame of remembrance is a symbol of Passover from the darkness of 1994 to a bright, to a bright and hopeful, hopeful future for all of us and the generations to come. Thank you and God bless you.